Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and welcome back to the second channel video. This is our series where we talk about geography and the world and stuff. And today, I wanted to talk about Europe, which is a continent that people understand because it's filled with countries that people also understand. I mean, Sweden is a place filled with Swedish people, France is a place filled with French people, and Ireland is a place filled with Irish people. These are all countries that people don't really question. They understand why they exist, they understand why they've existed, and they understand why they kind of need to exist in the future. However, uh, when you start to dive into the weirder countries of Europe, for example, the micro countries, obviously Liechtenstein, you're like, how did that even get there? How is there a city-sized country just in the middle of some mountains over here? Um, it's a good question to ask. What about the bigger countries though of like Belgium? How does Belgium exist surrounded by so many other major powers in Europe and not get taken over by one of them? And although Belgian people ask this question too, why does Belgium need to exist? Um, it is a very valid question about why is this even here? And this dives, uh, this goes into for so many other countries across Europe, like Portugal, why has it not been invaded by Spain? And so I figured in this, uh, you know, video, because if you ask normal people, why does Portugal exist? They'll give you some nonsense arts, or they'll make you feel dumb, like, of course, Portuguese people are different to Spanish people, and the nation states imply they can't be joined together. But, uh, you know, the question isn't why, uh, you know, they exist uh, to some extent, as much as it is like, why have they not stopped existing? How does it continue to exist? Which feels rude, but given that if you search why does, and then country name, the most common thing about some countries is like, why does Ireland have no snakes? Why does Sweden hate Norway? But for Belgium, it is genuinely, why does Belgium exist? Why does Luxembourg exist? Why does Andorra exist, for example? Or why does Moldova exist? Why does uh, Belarus exist? And finally, of course, there's why does Portugal exist? Which is where we're going to start this video, because I guess Europe goes west to east in terms of uh, recognizability. And so many people, just like me, have probably had the question at some point, uh, you know, when, when you look at a map when I was a child, I was like, huh, it's weird. Spain controls basically all of the Iberian Peninsula besides this little bit right here and Portugal, the much smaller country that surely could be militarily dominated by Spain, um, you know, is entirely bordered by it. How has Spain not just gobbled up Portugal right now? And uh, yeah, it's a very important question. I understand why you're asking it. However, when you dive into, um, you know, when, when you look into Spain and Portugal's history, it actually becomes more apparent that it's weirder that, uh, you know, Spain is the weirder country for existing rather than Portugal. Because although Spain has existed in some form for hundreds of years, it's been lots of different divided kingdoms. And even if you look at a map of it now in terms of language, you'll see that like Spanish is the widespread language, but there's a whole Catalan region. Oh yeah, you remember Catalonia? There's the Basque country. There's Gallus Galician. I don't even know how you say that. Galician. There's so many different languages and so many other groups that have, uh, you know, historically made up Spain, uh, Valencian, etc, 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 that actually Spain is the weird hodgepodge of loads of different places together, whereas Portugal, you know, while Spain was lots of divided places, Portugal is relatively consistent. Again, if we look back at the map, you can see there's some interesting subdivisions of their language, but by and large, uh, Portugal is a place that speaks Portuguese and has been historically well centered together, and again, has this lovely coast around Europe, whereas Spain has been the lots of places coming together. And so why does Portugal exist is a valid question, but I think the weirder question is why does Spain exist? As for why uh, has Spain not taken over Portugal, given that Spain has existed a long time and Portugal could have been taken over, the simple answer is military alliances. Portugal has had a lot of alliances. Famously, the Portuguese-British alliance is the oldest uh, continuing one in the world uh, since like 1491. They haven't fought each other. Um, but otherwise, even if Spain wanted to take Portugal, which they could probably do given enough time, it wouldn't be an easy fight because although Portugal and Spain look like they just border each other, the reality is if you look, it's a lot of rivers and well-fortified natural borders for the most part. And so for Spain to take Portugal, it's not as easy as it was for, let's just name a random example, if just Germany wanted to take, say, uh, the Netherlands or Belgium or France, it would be perhaps easier for that to happen. I don't know if we have historical examples of that, um, but it would be easier in most places. I mean, obviously, it would be hard for, Sp for Germany to go over the border here, but thankfully, there's no way for Germany to get to France that doesn't involve their shared border. Anyway, you know, history memes, not right now. Uh, let's talk about other countries, because by the way, just in case you're curious, because this map about why does, I, I got curious too, and I was like, so why does country name? And uh, I did decide to Google it, and when you type why does, apparently the top result is why does sex hurt? And then most of these is like, why does it hurt my husband or my wife when we make love? It's kind of nice that people are searching this so much. 
Or maybe it's not nice that it's happening so much that people have to search for it. But if you just, if you search, why does Belgium? Um, as you can see, oh, I spelt Belgium wrong. Uh, as you can see, why, why does Belgium exist is <laughs> in here in so many places, but it's not the top. The top one is why does Belgium speak French, which is why I feel like we have to start with that one to some extent. So here you go. Here's Google Maps again. Uh, here is the map of Spain again over here. No, over here. Here is the map of Spain and its languages. Spain, uh, I, I, I had to speak to my government recently and she was shocked that Spain spoke multiple languages. And so if you look at Switzerland, it's the same thing. Wow. German is the majority language, but it's not everywhere. And there's Italian, and there's some French, and there's Romance. And Switzerland is an example of a strong country. Is it strong because it gets over those things? Or magically, is it just true that like actually speaking lots of languages is good? It's almost certainly the first, not the second. But then interestingly enough, if you look at uh, Belgium, you'll see they speak Dutch in the north, they speak French in the south, there's a tiny bit of German in the east, and then Brussels, or Bruxelles, uh, is uh, <laughs> bilingual French slash Flemish. And so it's very interesting that like, okay, so it's a country, Belgium, which speaks very loosely 50%, it's not quite 50, uh, very loosely 50% French and 50% Dutch. Why is that the case? Why do they not speak Belgian? How does a country exist when it doesn't have a language? Given that if you look at most countries, one of the t core things that tie ties countries in together um, is the language they have in common. I mean, for example, Polish people speak Polish, Danish people speak Danish. Why do Belgium uh, but how do Belgian people exist as a concept without a language to unify them together? And the simple answer as to why Belgium exists is that they used to be part of the Netherlands and they, uh, you know, and then, then they split from the Netherlands because of religion. Here is a map of religion in the former Netherlands. As you can see, Belgium's Catholic. The Netherlands is, you know, one of those other weird sects. And that's the simple explanation as to why Belgium and indeed also Luxembourg split from the formerly Kingdom of the Netherlands. In fact, these countries were so close together um, that they, uh, and, and they still kind of are, it's just religion that divided them to some extent, that they have their own union inside the European Union called Belgium. Benelux, where they do have their own representatives, their own uh, inter-cooperation. It's very easy to go between these three countries. There's a lot of fun things going on. Even the flags. I mean, I'm just saying, there's lots of similarities. Isn't isn't this fun? Wow, look how close friends the Benelux countries are. But my point here is that um, ba ba basically, religion is the simple explanation as to why Belgium exists. But then, like, why, you know, if they split away and they speak two separate languages, how is it not divided again into two countries? And uh, if you look at the current Belgian political climate, it does look like that's going to happen at some point, maybe. I wouldn't actually count on it, but it looks very tense between the two languages because, yeah, they, this is a country which is made of people that basically can't speak to each other, literally can't speak to each other in many cases. And so, yeah, why does Belgium exist? Um, the simple answer as to how they have any identity at all is that the Netherlands hasn't existed as a country in its own right for very long. In fact, the Netherlands was mostly owned uh, by the like, Habsburg rulers across Europe, and the south of the Netherlands was the Spanish Netherlands because, yeah, Spain doesn't didn't own Portugal but it did control Belgium and it's very complex when you dive into Europe too far it makes no sense and Belgium therefore has a very loose identity why has it not been invaded and taken over it has literally been invaded and taken over many times it's just people keep setting it back because the the key goal for most of the last couple hundred years in Europe has been balance of power if any country if France had Belgium, they would be more powerful. If Germany had Belgium, they'd be more powerful. And so Belgium is set up very deliberately as a neutral country. Neutral in European affairs, at least. I mean, uh, I, you, I, I, I would ask uh, about, you know, the bad things uh, they've done in other continents. Like, I, I wish I could ask, like, a Belgian person to like, give me a hand in asking what atrocities they've committed, but, you know, maybe that would be uh, off topic for this video. So why does Luxembourg exist? So, um, short answer, it shouldn't. Long answer. Ah, that works for me. So, um, yeah, with that said, um, next up here, we've got Liechtenstein. <laughs> Should we go back to Luxembourg? You know, can I take one of my favorite facts? Luxembourg, um, as the, uh, is like a historic, uh, principality. Uh, there's a prince behind Luxembourg. And, uh, so if you search Luxembourg, though, the bigger Luxembourg is the Luxembourg that was in Belgium. When Luxembourg went free from Belgium, they took a larger part of it to keep as their own. And so Luxembourg, the country, is smaller than Luxembourg, province of the, of the, of Belgium, which, fun fact, also speaks uh, French, or it speaks Walloon. Walloon is actually different to French. It's just kind of close to French and like dialects versus languages. It's all very confusing. And you know what else is confusing? Uh, Luxembourg. Yeah, it's a very small country, very rich country, um, very conveniently located as being like kind of neutral center of the EU. It's been invaded a few times. 
Um, but again, it's recent enough that that's fine. But then, so how about Liechtenstein? Liechtenstein is an incredibly historic country, and it's not only, uh, you know, this, this super historic country, but it's also um, a country which continues to have, like, some great influence, and which still, to this day, is ruled by a king. And so, how does a kingdom exist this small, and not just get one day absorbed by Switzerland or Austria? And so, this is another history lesson, but long story short, Germany has not always been Germany. It used to be loosely the Holy Roman Empire, a whole bunch of individual kingdoms which just loosely work together to not be invaded by outsiders. And so one of those kingdoms was Liechtenstein over here, kind of separated, but again, was normal for countries to be separated, as you can tell by the Spanish Netherlands um, and whatever else. And so uh, if you look at Liechtenstein, uh, Liechtenstein is a country, um, or Liechtenstein was one of those principalities that was ruled by a prince who was just very good at getting along and staying on the right side of all European conflicts. It really is a kind of weird example of that. And then within the last hundred years, sure, Switzerland could have taken it, but Switzerland's a very formal by the books country. They they offered, you know, they, they I think they offered politely and Liechtenstein said no. And they said, well, that's good enough for us. We tried. And uh, I, I think in reality, these days they could merge together, but they have a close enough relationship, Liechtenstein and Switzerland. They're both in the uh, Schengen area. And if you want to go from one country to the other, it's very, very easy. It's so easy, in fact, that um, Switzerland accidentally invaded Liechtenstein because their, their soldiers went a bit too far, crossed the border without permission, was very embarrassing, they had to apologize, and I think that's hilarious. So, um, therefore, the next uh, country we should talk about, because micro countries as a whole, we have to do a rapid fire round. Uh, why does the Vatican City exist? Um, because religious reasons and Mussolini. Sounds like a joke, but it's genuinely real. Why does San Marino exist? Very old, historic country, it's mountainous, it's too hard to take compared to the just asking them to do what you want anyway. Same kind of goes uh, with Monaco. However, Monaco is a um, everyone's favorite country with a Formula One track in it. Um, so uh, Mon Monaco, and, and gambling as well. Monaco is a very rich principality, and in general, um, again, it used to be ruled by different people to the rest of France. France didn't take it over, although Charles de Gaulle basically threatened uh, by saying, yeah, if you let too many French people move there and avoid our high taxes, because France is France, um, then that's a, that's a thing we'll be mad with. And they said, sure, we won't. And Monaco has, has maintained their independence since. Andorra is a funny example, though. So Andorra is straddling the line between micro country and not, in my opinion. Why does Andorra exist right between two powers? Uh, why, why doesn't Spain just take it one day? Because they do speak mostly Catalan-ish language. Um, and so, uh, given that they speak Catalan, which puts them perfectly within Catalonia, why is Andorra not a part of Spain? Um, simple answer is that they Andorra was very close. So Andorra used to be a small principality surrounded by slightly bigger principalities, and they had a war, and in the war it was like disputed who should get Andorra, and the simple solution was, what if we give it to both of you? You have to share it, and so um, what eventually became France um, had to share Andorra with uh, Catalonia, and so Catalans, um, I think it's like their bishop or something, uh, shares the power with the president of France. The president of France is also one of the princes of Andorra. And so by being effectively a joint sovereignty country, a condominium would be the modern day solution. By being a joint sovereignty country, uh, there's no reason for either country to invade. And, but there is reason for each country to be mad if the other one does invade. If Spain takes Andorra, then France has lost something not that they probably care, but I mean, it's a, it's a, it's not enough to start an instant over. And if Spain and France involved, uh, invades uh, Andorra, then I hear geese. Um, <laughs> then uh, then obviously uh, Spain has lost something. And so Andorra exists by being perfectly sandwiched between big powers. This is basically the small country survival guide. If you want to be a small country, be a country that multiple countries don't want someone else having, and you'll be fine. Life pro tip. I think this is uh, the simple solution as to how like. Taiwan manages to exist despite having a very hostile power near. But this video is not about Taiwan. It's about Moldova. Why does Moldova exist? Um, honestly, any time... So now we've done all the Western European countries uh, that people probably have questions about. Anything east of the Iron Curtain, why does it exist? Somewhere in the explanation, you can simplify down to the Soviet Union and Stalin-like playing games. So why does um, Moldova exist? Um, well, when Stalin was rolling across Western Europe to uh, liberate 
in big air quotes, those people. Um, so uh, when he was doing that, he decided he would have some Moldova. It was actually a province of Romania, Bessarabia. You know, I said that totally correctly, don't question me. Uh, he was rolling across it, he, he wanted Bessarabia, and so he just took it, made it part of the Soviet Union, the Moldovian SSR. Uh, why has Moldova, since independence in 1991, not rejoined Romania? The simple answer is that separate histories for a very long time, separate economic systems, separate people, um, has slowly started to diverge. However, um, since I last told this story, in 2020 actually, um, there has been a new president elected of um, Moldova, and yeah, Dece 24th of December 2020, very recently, and the new president is quite quite European. Almost every Eastern European country is like pro-Europe or pro-Russia, and uh, so Moldova just switched from having a pro uh, Russia president to a pro Europe president. By the way, as far as European, you know, like central figures go, given that she's also 48, is that this is impressively attractive? Just, just need to throw that out there um, so the comments don't mention it. And so, if you read into her opinions about COVID-19, she thinks that's bad. Um, she thinks uh, that the other things are good. And if you read into this uh, far enough, you'll read that actually, um, if. She Furthermore, when asked how she would vote in case there was a referendum on the unification of Romania and Moldova, Sandy replied that she would vote yes. And so, uh, for the first time, we've got a president in Moldova that actively would want or would ideally prefer uh, being a part of Romania is a big step for them one day joining. As far as every country on this list goes, Moldova is the one that is least likely to exist in 50 years, but it's still not a sure thing. And look, although you could also argue that, like, with the EU going the way it is. Maybe every country only becomes like country and name only. Who knows for sure? What would you call that, like a kino? That sounds offensive. You know what else is offensive though? The very, uh, people question Montenegro's existence. This is like the one country where you can't really blame uh, the USSR. And I'll admit, if you, uh, if you look at this map right here, People don't ask why Montenegro exists, they ask why it has a Spanish name. So I figured I'd just go, why is it called Montenegro? Which, if I'm not mistaken, would be mountain and then black. Mountain black uh, in Spanish. Uh, it doesn't have a Spanish name. It used to be ruled by uh, Venetians. Uh, nowadays, we'll just say Italians, be simple. But it is Venetian. Uh, and so Montenegro is actually the English, English version of the Venetian for what they called the country, which is loosely Mount Black. In Montenegro, it looks like this. I can't say that, and I'll believe that you can't. But it's just, uh, the country is called uh, Black Mountain, Mount Black, whatever you, way you want to say that, uh, because the, that's that's what they call a big mountain range in their country. And why is Montenegro a separate Serbia? They had a referendum on it. Why do they have a referendum on it? Why do they consider themselves to be a separate group to Serbia? Uh, principalities, old stuff. They have a separate language, but a language is just a dialect with an army and a a flag. So why, why, why did they, uh, you know, like, <laughs> why did they yes, used to be separate kingdoms and why do they have a separate language? It's because, um, yeah, they, they're, they're very slightly different people, slightly different history, so on and so forth. Serbia was on the, the downfall anyway. They figured, let's get out. And uh, again, Serbia and Montenegro will both be joining the EU. So it's all kind of uh, balanced out by that anyway. Speaking of things that are balanced out, the final country today, why does Belarus exist? If you look at Belarus, which everyone in the area, again, uh, like it, it, Ukrainians, Russians, uh, Moldova, it, it seems to be uh, called like Belarusia is uh, <laughs> like, a, a, like a, my, my, every, every time I've spoken to someone in English, they explain every country in English and they're like, yes, Belarusia. And so Belarus is one of those few countries where even in English, non-English speakers in English will refer to it as something else. Just like how um, Spanish and Portuguese people call all of this America, even though in English this is colloquially America. It's one of those weird things. And so Belarusia, why does it exist? Um, simple answer as to why people question that is if we go back to these maps of uh, various uh, languages, you'll see, interestingly enough, even though Belarusian is the uh, mother tongue, they speak a lot of Russian, and Belarusian is very similar to Russian. So why is there a country, the closest, by the way, the, the last dictatorship in Europe is what people call this as well. Um, the last dictatorship in Europe that is really friendly with Russia has so much ethnic similarity. Man, look at the size of Russia. Like, the, the country name goes in the middle of the country, and so Belarus goes here. Russia goes over there, because there's so much Russia to the east and west of that label. Whatever. Um, so Belarus is very, um, is very uh, questionable as a country. Why does it exist? Um, there are separate people who are Belarusian. They're the most similar, probably, of all the former Soviet states to 
um, Russia, and they've only existed since 1991, so people could question, like, they probably could and should be absorbed by Russia. And again, given uh, Russian history, they've been part of Russia many, many times. However, unlike most of the rest of Russia, or the Kievian Rus, or, or the history that goes back there, Belarus often has more shared history with the Poland, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. They've had a lot of time outside of Russia. That influences development. Obviously, white Russians, which is what Bel Belarus actually translates to, I just realized it's also a cocktail name. I wonder if the cocktail is named after the people. But um, white Russians um, are obviously a um, is obviously a, a group, and so like whatever, there's an ethnic group. And uh, so the simple answer: Why does Belarus exist? Boils down to something along the lines of like, well, they were separated out as an administrative unit during the uh, Soviet Union days. They even got themselves a UN seat. This is one of my favorite fun facts: that Stalin only that the reason Belarus and Ukraine, even before they were independent countries, had UN seats, which I think is one of the very few examples of that in the world, is because uh, Stalin wouldn't join the UN unless they got independent seats, so he could have free votes instead of one, which is hilarious. Separate point. Uh, but you know what else is hilarious and is a separate point? Uh, Belarus uh, feels like it shouldn't exist to some people, but in reality, it's just like, yeah, there's a slightly different ethnic group. These days, although they have a lot of policy aligned with Russia, they do also have some things where they go slightly different ways. And um, although it's the most likely country, country to just rejoin Russia, I also don't think it's very likely that they do that on their own uh, behalf. So um, the place I want to finish this uh, video with because I think it's interesting. Um, should we go? By the way, this is a map of the world. If uh, I, I found this and I couldn't help but share it. This is a map of the world. If you show a country's size relative to the number of Belarusian speakers uh, that live right there, and so uh, as you can see, this is this is the future. Uh, you know, people who live in Belarus uh, dream of, and I think that is fun. Maybe you think that's fun too. Australia is actually like surprisingly big given this map. New Zealand too, right? Maybe they're just not distorted correctly. Speaking of things that aren't distorted correctly, my opinions. So let's 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 finish off with saying that Belarus uh, exists as a country because uh, very different history. I feel like we're not rounding out the reasons to like why why did Russia let it go independent because they let all their former Soviet uh, republics go independent. Why did Russia make it as a separate republic because there are some Belarusian people who are very different and you know like again the the whole area they live on is different. The temperatures, the this is this is that, and um, then the final place that Ennis is like okay Belarus is currently a dictatorship roughly is how you call it. They have elections but like. Are they free and fair? Different question for a different time. But if you look into a uh, fun fact, Belarus has had one president, uh, Lushenko, and uh, if you therefore look at this fun fact, prime ministers of Israel by per place of birth, you'll actually find out that, um, I think it's fun at least, uh, you'll actually find out that there is, uh, in here, there is, uh, oh god, I've lost it. So there is uh, multiple uh, presidents who have been born in present day Belarus. Rus. In fact, there are two that have been born there, plus three in Ukraine, one in Poland. There have been more, um, <laughs> there have been more Israeli prime ministers born in Ukraine than in, uh, you know, like Israel itself. But more interesting than that to me is the fact that uh, there have been more uh, prime ministers of Israel born in Belarus than there have been presidents of Belarus. And is that a fun fact for a video on? It's probably not, but my food arrived a few minutes ago. So thank you for watching. Second channel, don't care. If you want to give me money for no reason, these videos qualities, not going to improve in the slightest, you can go to patreon.com slash toycat. It's linked down below. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing it. There's, there's, there's no commitment to quality, just a commitment to buy, uh, you know, silly food. And you know, I'm going to waste your money. It's going to go badly. So don't, don't, don't click patreon.com slash toycat in the description. Don't say thank you for watching second channel don't care because I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.